Hello everyone and welcome back to another GTA Online video where today I'm going to be doing a sort of timeline of the best supercars to own through all of the years that the game has been around and through all the DLCs that have been introduced through GTA Online's lifetime, so let's take a gander shall we? Before I begin, I'd like to remind you all that all of the cars that I mention may not be specifically the best in terms of lap time, but are more likely to have been the most popular on the track and at times there will be instances where there will be two or more cars in a certain spot in the video, so don't take the video too seriously if you disagree with anything that I say. Anyways, with that over with, let's get right to the video. So to start off, let's begin by talking about some of the best cars to own back in GTA Online in 2013, when it was first released. Now on the game's launch back then, they included quite a large variety of supercars to the roster, meaning plenty of choice for the pioneers of GTA Online racing. Let's see now, you had the choice of an Infernus, the Cheetah, the Bullet, the Vaca, the Entity XF, and last but not least, the Adder. Now I didn't actually play GTA Online until the PC Master Race release in 2015, but thankfully there wasn't really many supercars to be released since launch right until the High Life update. Watching a lot of videos when GTA Online first came out, I noticed that some of the most popular cars to use were... Uh, well, there wasn't really. There was a good mix of all the supercars that were currently in the build of the game. Except for the bullet, I didn't really see many people driving that thing around, so it was mainly the Vaca, the Adda, the Entity and the Infernus being driven on racetracks. All of the cars had pretty equal performance except for the Adda, which being based off of one of the fastest cars in real life, boasted the highest top speed that one could attain on land. The only way to travel faster being the laser jet because the Hydra didn't exist back then. The Adda despite having a higher top speed than all the other supercars in the game at the time, had some pretty lackluster performance in all the other departments, so the Adder was really only used for tracks which had very long straights. But tracks like those were pretty rare, especially when people didn't even have the ability to make their own races way back when. Yeah, we're getting real historical in this video. Flash forward a few months to March the 4th, 2014, and players finally got some brand new cars to introduce to the racetrack. Uh, well, when I say cars, I mean a car at least, in the form of the Grotti Turismo R. The Grotti Turismo R was added to the supercar lineup, offering slightly greater performance over the pre existing supercars and was enjoyed by racing enthusiasts everywhere. But it wasn't until the High Life update on May the 13th, 2014, that we saw the release of the Pegasi Zentorno, featuring average top speed in the class but offering great acceleration and handling to boot. Not only was the Zentorno a great performing street race, racing car, but its dashing exotic looks made it popular among non-racing and racing players alike. That is, if players could afford its three quarter million asking price. The Zentona was extremely expensive back in the day, almost as expensive as the Addo, which would set you back a clean million dollars. And that's before you delved into the realm of car modding. After the High Life update, it would be over a year, June 10th, 2015 exactly, before we saw some new supercars on the horizon in the form of the ill-gotten gains part 1 DLC, which was the first DLC that I started making proper GTA Online videos for, except for that one video, you know. The part 1 update gave us the Pegasi Osiris, which was... okay. The price of the car was through the roof compared to the other supercars, and in my own personal experience of doing racing at the time, most people I saw were still using the older cars like the Adda and the Zentorno, with a select few using the newly released Osiris. So to say that this was an influential car in GTA racing, I wouldn't really say so. That doesn't mean it's a bad car, it's actually really darn good, but it wasn't really a flagship car if you know what I mean. Come July the 8th, and we get part 2 of the ill-gotten games, where we got the legendary Progen T20. People would be shocked to find out that the car would cost a massive 2.2 million dollars, making it the most expensive car in the game at the time. But god damn was it worth it, because that thing flew like a goddamn aeroplane, yeehaw! The T20 was hands down the best car to use in GTA Online Racing, and if you could afford one and had the skill to drive it properly, you would have a hard time finding someone who could match you in a race. Even today with the current build of the game, the T20 is still a fantastic car to use in GTA Online Racing, and with its aesthetic appeal that wasn't over the top like the Zentorno, the T20 was a very popular car, just like it is to this day. Moving on, we waited a little while for some new supercars, we got a wide body variant of the Sultan RuneScape and the Banshee. Eh, they weren't really that good, and were more for just showing off how rich you were and weren't very good at proper racing in the supercars class, so moving on. 
Further adventures into finance and felony. Loads of supercars in that DLC, but the two main ones that really meant anything were the Pfister 811 and the X80, though the X80 was more of an expensive version of many other supercars and didn't really offer that much pedigree in terms of proper racing. It was fast, sure, but there were cheaper cars that could do the job just as well. But the 811, phew, now that's a car that a lot of you will agree was one hell of a car. I personally won a lot of races in this thing, and I think it's because of its handling alone. It featured the right amount of oversteer to handle those extra tight corners, it had high top speed, as well as its great maximum grip. The other cars in the DLC, I saw the FMJ and the Reaper a few times, but not really as much as the 811 and the Proto. Moving on, nothing much for a while until we had the Cunning Stunts DLC, released on July the 12th, 2016. There were so many supercars I couldn't even name them all, but the main car that everyone used was easily the RE7B. If you were around at the time of this car's release and knew about the speed glitch that this thing had, nothing could beat the car. That was until Rockstar patched the glitch like a month later, but it was fun while it lasted. The Progen Tyrus was also a popular car alongside the Emperor ETR1. Again, when the glitch wasn't known about, there were people using all three of the supercars in this DLC. Everything about the Cunning Stunts DLC was just, mmm, yeah, perfect. The best DLC we've had in years, if not ever. Come December 13th, 2016, and we were introduced to the Import Export DLC, which I think introduced us to the most amount of supercars in one DLC at once. Five new supercars, not including their custom variants. Out of all of the cars in the DLC, I found that people were most often using the Tempesta and the Penetrator. I can understand the Tempesta, it was a fantastic racing car. Quick on the corners, quick off the line, and just quick in general. The Penetrator was also pretty good, but the Tempesta was the one that I saw more of on the track. The Spectre? Yeah, it was alright. I saw a couple of those around. The GTB, which was released a little later, was a popular car on the track. I don't really have much experience in one though, so I can't really tell you how well it performed, but it must have done well considering at one point it was the most prominent thing on the track. The Truffade Nero, I have to say it wasn't as popular as the others. Probably because it had the same downfalls as the car's sister, the Adder being fast as hell on long straights, but lacking in every other category. I didn't really see many of these on the track besides its initial launch. On March 14th, 2017, we got the new Cunning Stunt Special Vehicle Circuit content update, which gave us one new supercar, the Progen GP1. It was alright. And that finally brings us to today. The gun running DLC has been out for like, what, two weeks now as of the making of this video? And that brings us to the Dubauchi Vagina. I actually don't know how popular the Vagina is on the racetrack right now. I haven't really been racing since its launch, so I would have to take your word for how popular or unpopular it is on the track and if it's good or not. But just from driving it around, it does seem like a pretty nice car to drive, it's pretty fast, and it's got really good stopping distance compared to to some other cars. So let me know what you think. Was your perspective on racing a little different from mine? Did you guys see the same cars on the racetrack as I did back in the day? And hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the Pyrom Gaming channel for loads more GTA Online videos coming to you very soon. See you around everyone.